Do you need a reel on your spear gun? Not at all. No, you don't, you don't need them, but most of my guns do have them. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Daniel Mann and this channel is all about spear fishing. Now, reels on spear guns. I get asked this question all the time. Do I need a reel? Should I get a reel? Why do you use a reel? In this video, we're going to unpack the pros and the cons, the situations where you might want to use a reel and situations where using a reel could just be disastrous. When most people see a reel on a spear gun, they think it is for fighting the fish like a fishing rod. So you shoot the fish and then you pull it in from the surface like a fishing rod. That's not what it is for at all. It is merely a line storage device. You will shoot the fish, spear goes out of the gun, into the fish, and maybe it fights on the bottom or you don't want to pull it up straight away because you've had a big dive, whatever. But you come to the surface and you can hold onto your gun, let the line out, and then you fight the fish from there. So what you will do is you have the line let out from the reel from you coming to the surface and you pull on the line to fight the fish. You don't fight it on the reel. It's merely there just to hold the line as a storage device. Whenever I shoot a fish with a reel gun that's taken some of the line out and I'm playing the fish on the surface, I always thread my arm through the bands and hold the gun close to me and then pull the line up whilst always swimming forward to avoid line tangling around your body. The alternative, you would have your gun connected to a piece of rope here, float line, float rope, whatever you want to call it. And then the other end of that is attached to a float like this. That sits on the surface. You swim along towing this float, you shoot a fish, you can drop your gun, you can do whatever you want. As well as it being nearly impossible to lose your gun, it also provides a few other advantages such as having the float on the surface to mark your position so your boaty can see you, other divers can see you, crazy jet skiers can see you. It also gives you somewhere to store your fish. You can put a stringer on the back of the float, hold them there. And if you come up from a dive and you've pushed it a little bit or you simply don't want to exert the energy, you can just let everything go and swim back to your float and then pull everything up because believe it or not, towing a spear gun and a rope down on a dive and up again actually puts a considerable amount of drag on your body and will wear you out physically a lot quicker than diving without a spear gun. Also when diving with a rig line, it's really easy for your dive buddy to see where you are on the bottom. They just sit above your float, follow the rig line down and when you're coming up, they can see the rig line will be floating somewhat so they know you're on the ascent really easy for them to catch you on the surface if anything goes wrong. So why give up all those positive things just to put a reel on your spear gun? Well, having a reel on your spear gun can be quite handy in certain situations. Diving down with a reel gun and not a rig line puts a lot less drag on your body. Now, it may seem minuscule, but when there's areas of current and you're trying to sit on the bottom, waiting for say a job fish or something like that coming in, there's a slight current. If that rig line pulls tight, your float will eventually pull you off the bottom and it's very hard to aim. There's been so many times where I've had a rig line and I'm on the bottom trying to aim for a fish and then I've got my float line pulling on the handle and it's very difficult to aim. That's a pain. The other thing is diving washy areas like a headland where you've got surge coming over and you've got the rig line tangling over the conjavoy covered rocks and barnacles and all that sort of stuff. Also, when you're trying to hide from fish, fish can see your rig line and your float on the surface in very clean water. That's not to say I haven't shot a heap of fish with a rig line and a float line, but sometimes when you're trying to hunt something a little bit more wary, it's a little bit easier with a reel because you can hide and maneuver through the rocks or caves. For instance, in this dive here, I am crawling my way across the bottom. I know there's a big archway up and I'm trying to go through it. If I try and do this with a rig line, my rig line's going to get caught on the top of the cave and then it's going to cause some noise. Here I'm free to go through, shoot the fish, pick it up off the bottom and get through untangled, uninhibited. The freedom that you get from using a real gun around places like a pier, structures, jetties, snags on the bottom, bommies, coral, caves, it's just unmatched. When you're diving next to somebody on the surface, I've had it so many times where I've been diving in pairs and we both have a rig line, it gets tangled. You, there's so many times where I've dived down and I get halfway down and I'm pulling on my rig line, trying to get to the bottom to a fish and then somebody's just swum over my float line and then it's tangled in theirs or you're swimming this way, they're swimming this way, your floats have tangled together and you're trying to pull them off each other and it's just, 
It's just a real pain and it just takes the joy out of diving. When you're checking small little spots out of a boat, it's really easy to jump over the side just for reconnaissance. Say you're sounding around, you find a nice little rock, you just want to get out of the boat, get in the water real quick, take a gun in case there's something there. Really easy, grab the real gun, dive down, you can still land a sizable fish with a real gun. With a rig line, you have to throw it over the side, tow it out with the boat, then coil it back up over the top of you, make sure you don't get tangled on the wreck, etc., etc. So sometimes having a real gun in the boat just to check these spots is very, very handy. The other reason that I really love using a real gun, particularly around Brisbane in Australia, is sharks. When you shoot a fish with a real gun, the gun is in your hands. This particular instance here, I was off Stradbroke Island, I shot a wahoo, the bull sharks came straight in and I was very thankful to have my gun still in my hands to put some distance between me and the shark. Like everything in life, nothing is perfect. Reels on spear guns are far from perfect. They can jam up, they can fail. This has happened to a number of my friends, it's happened to me, I've either had the line come out too quickly and if you're diving in some areas with current or you're moving your gun about, sometimes the line can just loop over the handle, simple as that, and it's not going to unwind. You're heading to the surface after a dive and you're holding onto your gun because you like your gun and you want to take it home and you were trying to fight this fish and then it locks up like that. The only thing for you to do is let go of that gun. Now, this is the danger of having a reel on your gun because some people will think, Maybe I can make it to the surface if I just drag that fish. Now, if you've shot, I don't know, a 10 kilo Spanish mackerel and you're trying to drag that back to the surface, that might just be enough to tip you over the edge and you might have a blackout. So that is why having a reel on your gun is very dangerous. There is the temptation of holding onto that gun too long and not knowing when to let it go. If you take nothing away from this video, take away this. Do not buy a spear gun and put a reel on it if you cannot afford to replace that gun tomorrow. You should have no hesitations on losing that gun because that's the choice you make when you put a reel on it. Unlikely as it may be, the muzzle wrap does happen. I've had it happen on a number of my spear guns that I've used. I know a lot of friends that have had it happen to them. What we normally do to mitigate this is have a reel on our belts as a backup insurance policy for these guns. So if something goes wrong and the reel's not unspooling, you clip on your belt reel to this and you can safely ascend. Other times I haven't even had time to do that and I've had to leave my gun on the bottom. I can remember very clearly one summer I was diving with Tim McDonald off Morton Island. We were chasing some snapper in about 20 to 25 meters of water. They went away after we shot a few, then there was some big IC brim on the bottom. I shot a big IC brim and I think I missed and the flopper just hooked onto the reef and I couldn't get it off the bottom. And so I just had to leave my gun, I just dropped it let it go. I'd only had this gun for about a month. I'd slaved over it for about six months, making it in between shifts and work. I really liked that gun, but I just had to let it go straight away. Ah, oh, the lie got tangled in me rubbers. Gun's still on the bottom. Big boo, try to. Thankfully, Tim was there, went back down, got it for me. But you just have to be prepared to let go of that gun if you're going to put a reel on it, because so, so easy to lose them. If you're diving with a real gun without a float nearby or a boat, you're likely to get hit by another boat or you get lost. You can't get seen very easily, especially in the late afternoon or the early morning when the sun's low on the water, lots of reflections. It's incredibly hard to see you. So what I like to do when I use a real gun most of the time is I will still tow my float around and I will anchor my float with a weight on the end of my line and I'll swim around that and hunt that way. That's how I do most of my diving here in the UK because I find a lot of the structure here has caves, has holes, kelp as well. Kelp is a pain with a float line because you swim through the kelp trying to hide it from pollock and then when you try and go up, your float line is wrapped around a big kelp stalk and it's just a nightmare. So that's why I much prefer anchoring my flow swimming around it. Another disadvantage of reels is trying to shoot big fish. Now, let me just say, it's very possible to shoot very large fish with a reel gun if you are skilled at using a reel gun and you shoot the fish right. My friend Tim McDonald, he shot 135 kilo marlin with a reel gun. He got back up from floats afterwards, but you can actually do it. But it's not something that you're going to go out and target. You're not going to go target dogtooth tuna with a reel gun that's kind of foolish in my opinion. It's much better to have a big setup with a float and a line. 
The other thing is, when you're fighting fish on these, I tend not to rely on the drag system very much. I will have it just loose enough so that when a fish comes out, when a fish takes off, it pulls the line out. But for the drag, what I do is when I'm coming to the surface, I will use my hand and cut the reel like this to use that as the drag. That way it's very tactile. You can apply more pressure if you need to, less pressure. If you see it going for a hole, you can you know, put a little bit more muscle onto it. Or if you see it's completely clear, you can just let it go, go to the surface and get to the surface very easily. The other reason why I suggest you don't use the drag on the reel is because if you want to loosen it, if you've got it too tight, when this line is coming off here, and that handle is spinning around there at a rapid rate of knots. It's very hard to get your fingers in there when that's spinning and if you've shot a big fish and it's coming off really, really quickly, it's hard to get to that drag knob there. This is why I love the Rife Reel. The Rife Reel is, in my opinion, the best reel I have ever used. They are incredibly expensive, they're quite chunky, but they have a lever on the side to adjust the drag that way so you can go to drag, more drag, or free spool very, very quickly. They are the dog's bollocks. Now, it probably seems like I'm hating on the float and float line setup. I'm not. Certain situations, it's perfect for hunting bigger fish. When I've gone to Norway shooting halibut, I will always use a float and a float line because that's the best thing for the job. Trying to fight a potentially 80, 90 kilo fish on a reel without any backup, it is just not the situation to be using a reel gun. That's all for this video. If you got something out of it, give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one.